question when making a new list of 12 such values to help modern people through today's chaotic times. Okay. Link number one. Hierarchies are a common facet of life in societies around the world, so give yourself an advantage with good posture. Okay, good You've posture. You've probably heard of the phrase the pecking order, right? right? But do you know where it originated? It pecking comes from the order. Norwegian zoologist Thorleif Sheldrup Ebby, who was studying barnyard chickens in the 1920s when he noticed that there was a clear hierarchy among these birds. At the top were the healthiest, strongest ones that always got to peck first when the chicken feed came. At the bottom were the weakest chickens, with their feathers falling out, who only got to peck at the leftover crumbs. Pecking orders like this aren't limited to chickens. They occur naturally throughout the animal kingdom. Lobsters, for instance, whether they're in the ocean or raised in captivity, will aggressively fight over the best and most secure spots for shelter. Scientists have found that these competitive conflicts will lead that. to the winners and losers having different chemical balances in their brains. Winners will have a higher ratio of the hormone serotonin to octopamine, while the ratio in losers will tilt in the opposite direction. Serotonin These levels can isn't that love drug? Lobsters. More serotonin will lead to the winners being more agile and upright, and more octopamine makes losers tense and curled up. This difference will factor into further confrontations, as the upright lobsters will appear bigger and more intimidating, causing the tense ones to remain submissive. As you may have guessed, similar hierarchies and cycles of winning and losing play out among humans. Oh, she is sped up. 1.25. Hold up. That's kind of slow. I didn't even know it was sped up. I just thought that's how it always sounded. Wow, I'm really good at listening. Are you guys that bad at listening? Yeah. Studies have shown that those in the grips of alcoholism or depression are less likely to enter a competitive situation which only reinforces i didn't know you could slow it down <laughs> that was funny i thought that was normal speed and i was like mm, i don't think that's it <laughs> So this is the app that it's called, what is it called? It's called Blinkist and it summarizes popular books into audiobooks so you can listen to the popular and it summarizes each book into about like 10 minutes and I was just kind of curious because everybody keeps mentioning this Jordan B. Peterson guy or whatever. For some reason I keep mixing him up with Scott Peterson which was the serial killer who like killed his wife and his baby but that they're totally different people apparently. So <laughs> um yeah, different people. So I just want we just wanted to hear his methodologies to life, which we've learned that lobsters are aggressive and um pecking order of chickens. Weak chickens don't get shit, apparently. What else we got? Activity and continued low self esteem and depression. And depressed lobsters. Conversely, those on a winning streak often present a swaggering and confident body language, which can help them keep their streak alive. Just like lobsters, humans are constantly measuring themselves up against each other, and we associate a person's intelligence with their physicality. Ooh. So, if you're trying to give yourself an advantage, follow the first rule. Hold your head high and strike the posture of a winner. Blink number two. <laughs> Care for yourself with the same tenderness you would a loved one. I do this. If your dog was sick and the vet prescribed it medication, you wouldn't second So so the first rule is to sit up straight and don't sit like a loser, apparently is what Jordan's first rule is. Don't sit like like you are weak. You need to when you're around other human people, we need to size them up and look like we have the biggest dick in the room. Or in this uh, I guess situation, Titus vagina. So, <laughs> just kidding. Ask the doctor and leave the prescription unfilled, would you? And yet, one third of people ignore the medical prescriptions they're given by doctors, which begs the question, why do we take better care of our pets than ourselves? Part of the reason is that because we're always conscious of our own flaws, we feel self-loathing which in turn can lead to unnecessary self-punishment and a sense that we're unworthy of feeling good. Thus, we take better care of others than ourselves. This belief that we're unworthy goes at least as far back as the story of Adam and Eve being exiled from the Garden of Eden. Who here has taken better 
care of their pet than themselves. Do you guys find this true or you know people who take better care of their pets than themselves? Just, I don't know. Curious. In this metaphorical tale, Adam and Eve represent all human beings and they're tricked into eating the forbidden apple of knowledge by an evil serpent. By following the advice of the snake, humans are seen as being forever corrupted with wickedness. While the story of the Garden of Eden makes us self-conscious about this dark side within ourselves and can reinforce the sense that we don't deserve good things, it can also be read another way. It's not just us, but the whole world that is corrupted. The humans and the serpent of the garden can be seen as the entire world's natural mix of order and chaos. This Six duality string of guitar. nature can also be seen in Eastern philosophy as well, and represented in the two sides of the yin-yang symbol. There's a light and a dark side, yet both sides contain a portion of the other within them, and neither can exist without the other. In this scenario, harmony is achieved by finding the healthy balance between light and dark, and one should strive not to go too far in either direction. For example, if a parent were to try and protect their child from being exposed to anything bad, they would only be replacing that chaos with the tyranny of too much order. In other words, it's futile to try to be perfectly too good. Much order? This leads us to the second rule. Care for yourself like you would a loved one. So, look after yourself, but don't fight against the chaos, as this is an unwinnable fight. And rather than only doing what makes you happy, try to do what is best for you. As a child, you may not have wanted to brush your teeth or wear your mittens, but these are things that should be done. As an adult, Seems good. you must determine the goals that help define who you are and the direction you want to take in life. Hmm. Then, you will find the steps that you should take and the actions that are best for you. Blink number three. Fucking hate minutes. The wrong companions can drag you down, so choose your friends. Oh. Have a good stream. See you, Ajax. Have a good day. Ciao. It's building. This is building off the Aristotle and virtue theory. Hmm. Well, I, these are his 12 rules for life, so I'm just listening to the 12 rules. First one, I've not really thought about sitting up straight, but you know what? I, I knew this one uh, guy. I didn't think he was an incel, but he really did like Jordan Peterson a lot, so maybe he was. I don't know, since somebody mentioned that. I've seen that. I've definitely seen some... Uh, he's definitely had some incel -y talks, that's for sure. I will say that about him, which is weird. Um, but I think the, that rule, the two rules, woman can sit up straight and we can treat ourselves just like friends, you know? So I do that. They aren't teaching me anything I don't know yet. It's like Scary Guru. If you look past his hard exterior, he's amazing. Look up the video where he talks about his relationship with his wife. Eh, I ain't got time. I just wanted to know what the 12 rules for life is according to him the secret to life i like hearing other people's perspectives it's fun but we ain't got time for a wife conversation wisely choose One of friends the wisely childhood friends never left the prairies of his northern canadian hometown fairview alberta instead he stuck around and ended up among the town's other ne'er-do-wells every once in a while the author would return home and catch up with his friend and each time, his friend's slow, sad decline became more apparent. What was once youthful potential became aging resentment. For the author, it became clear that those ne'er-do-wells were bringing his friend down and holding him back in life. And this is something that can happen to anyone, anywhere. In a workplace What's setting, a, a similar dynamic can play out when an underachiever is put into a team of high performers. The manager might think that this will result in the problematic employee picking up good habits from the others, but studies have shown that the opposite is more likely to happen, and the bad habits will start to spread and bring down everyone's performance. This is why the third rule is to make sure you surround yourself with supportive friends, as these are the kinds of friendships that can bring about positive change. Being picky about your friends is a smart move and is not selfish or snobby. 
Supportive and encouraging friendships run both ways. When you need a boost, they'll be there for you. And if your friend needs help to rebound from a setback or make an improvement, you'll strong. be there for them. No, that was the angle. This I'm weak. can encourage individual success, and as Ooh, part of a team, it can lead to great social accomplishments. When the author left Fairview for college, he joined a group of like-minded individuals who helped each other in their studies and in many other accomplishments, such as creating a newspaper and running a successful student union. <laughs> Joker. You'll know you have good friends when they don't tolerate your wallowing in negativity. They'll want what's best for you, so they'll encourage you to snap out of it and get back on track. That's why my stream is so nice. Blink number four. They do Progress that. is made by comparing yourself to your past achievements, not to others. Yes. There used to I be such agree. a thing as being a big fish in a small pond. But now, thanks to the internet, even the concept of a small community is a thing of the past. These days, we're all part of a global community. And no matter where you are, there is always someone better than you. This brings us to the True. issue of self-criticism. Now, it's important to be critical of oneself. If we weren't, then we'd have nothing to strive for, no motivation to bitches. better ourselves, and our lives would quickly become meaningless. Hmm. Luckily, it's a human tendency to always see the present as lacking and the future as promising much better. There's what are we listening to? We are listening to um, a summary, like a 10-minute summary of Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. We're like on rule number four or something. Tucker, no. Stop. I mean, so far, so good. Last rule was have good friends that don't drag you down. And I completely agree. I totally unfriended somebody that was dragging me down and not being very cool. And I don't know. I just felt like they were very me, me, me. Like, they weren't there when I wanted them there, but if they needed something where it was inconvenient to me, but it benefited them, they were all about it. I was just like, they're like, yeah, Jen, I think that you just keep giving and you're a really generous person and stuff. And I was just like thinking to myself, like, and they were like, yeah, I don't really know why you're like that. Or I don't like, they almost seemed like, they didn't even like that I was like giving or like that they were just like they didn't care and I was like Ugh. yeah no I'm not about that his talks are very insightful how you gonna know where you stand if you don't compare yourself to others oh man it's a slippery slope uh, it's the points they make are really obvious um feel as good as an affirmation that you're doing the right things. Hmm. Oh, yeah. No jealous friends, man. I think that's why you find friends that are always, like, very similar to each other. Like, you're not going to find friends that kind of don't... Like, sometimes you'll find friends that don't look like each other, but, like, it has to be, like, really stable and cool and nice people. Like, sometimes it's very easy for people to get jealous and... Sometimes you don't sense jealous people until, like, you've known them for a while, and then you're like, whoa, that's really weird. I don't know the song, Saverin. Mm, can lead you to not be yourself. It happened. You listening to Jordan Peterson stuff? I mean, this is just... So far, nothing has been weird. I think it's because they kind of took out the meat of his the rules and just started talking about them really briefly. Not going into all the the other stuff if you are the best at your workplace you can use that to your advantage and ask for a raise I mean I think it depends how you define the best so if I define myself by subs and whatnot I guess I would be doing something else instead of what I'm doing but I don't know I think I define it by I don't know how good I feel. And right now I feel good. Hello. Uh, wait, who? K Tag? What? I'm jealous of the other guy knowing he's one word 
I'm being your BF. A lot of people don't have reasonable parents to tell them this stuff, so even the obvious shit is helpful. <laughs> helpful. I said helpful. <laughs> helpful. I can't even pronounce words now. Just not sure to fully friend someone. I know. Oh. Too deep to apologize. Ah, oh. that song. <laughs> <laughs> Slight race. <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, it just came out that way, man. I don't know how to unlurk to say you'd be successful at anything you set your mind to. I agree. I think so. Say, in my profession, professional cooking, it's easy to see who's good and who's bad. You make good food. The fuck? We're not gonna, I'm not reading chat no more. Reason for this tendency, as it helps us stay motivated to push forward and take action. However, self-criticism can get ugly when it becomes all about comparing ourselves to others. When this happens, we quickly lose sight of our progress. First of all, this- Also, this isn't common sense to not compare yourself to others. I'ma let you know, my Asian parent compare me to other people all the fucking time. I literally told them it's actually unhealthy for my mental health to compare me to other streamers. They were like, well, how are you supposed to know how good you are if I don't compare you to other streamer? And I'm like, stop. Like, these people are my friends. You don't compare me to my friends. Like, that causes, like, aminosity and weird shit. They're like, I don't understand. I just want to help you. And I'm like, no, you are not helping. Like, just stop. So, do not compare streamers to other streamers. It is really rude. They should just be compared against their old selves. Because, you know, it's like comparing one girl to another girl. You just can't compare them. They're totally different. Bum, bum, bum. Leads to thinking in black and white terms. We've either succeeded or failed. This prevents us from seeing the incremental improvements that are often small, but nonetheless important. Comparisons also lead to losing sight of the big picture by focusing on a single aspect of our lives and blowing it out of proportion. For instance, let's say you're reviewing the past year and notice that you weren't as productive at work as some of your peers. You could instantly end up feeling like a total failure. But if you were to zoom out and look at all the aspects of your life, you might realize that you made some real improvements in your family life. This is why- Oh my god, you are such a genius, Kaikia. Like, you're like, I should start comparing, like, why can't you just be, like, somebody else's mom that doesn't compare them? I need to, like, think of somebody else's mom, but, like, we don't really talk to other people's mothers, so that's kind of a hard one, but I feel like that that would be pretty good, honestly. I'm different from all the other... How am I different? Okay, this is really int I don't even know how I'm different. I would like you to explain to me, Tucker. Please explain, Tucker. Because, I mean, there are a lot of girls out here. I'm not going to lie. There are. Like, yeah. The third rule is to never compare yourself to others and to always judge yourself against your own prior accomplishments. Comparing current results to past ones will also keep you moving forward. If you start to think that you're always winning, this is a red flag that you need to do a better job of taking risks and giving yourself challenging goals. When checking in on your progress, think of yourself as a home inspector. This means looking at things from top to bottom and categorizing every problem. Is it a cosmetic or a structural fault? Before you can give a stamp of approval, I left out make a list of things that need to be improved. This detailed approach is likely to keep you so busy on yourself that you'll be unconcerned with how you stack up against others. Blink number five. It is a parent's duty to raise a responsible and kind child. If you've ever seen parents ignoring a child who's wreaking havoc, you may have wondered, are they just bad parents or are they being clever by allowing the child to tire himself out? Approaches hmm. to child rearing have changed over the years, often as a result of Thank the age-old nature versus nurture debate hmm. and differing opinions about the kinds of instincts we're born with. 
In the 18th century, there was a popular belief championed by the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau that suggested our prehistoric ancestors were sweet, gentle, and childlike. They what? blamed our history of war and violence on the corrupting influence civilization has had on us. But nowadays, we have a clearer understanding of the fact that people are indeed born with aggressive instincts and must learn how to become kinder, gentler, more civilized adults. After all, you likely <laughs> remember how vicious hey, kids on the playground can get. Most workplace. We are listening to the 12 Rules for Life from... It's a summarized version from Jordan Peterson. We're on rule five or whatever. It's only like 10 minutes or whatever, but I was just like, oh, I'm kind of curious because I keep hearing about this guy. Like, what are his ideas to life or whatever? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Yeah, so it's interesting. I like hearing different perspectives. These are a picture of tranquility in comparison. According to the author, it's really up to... Also, uh, Riley streams Overwatch, if I'm not mistaken. If you guys like Overwatch. ...parents to make sure their naturally aggressive youngster learns how to be a well-adjusted adult. Which brings us to the fifth rule. Parents need to be more than a friend. They Another need to one. raise a responsible and likable... Thank you, Go being. Detail! This can be a challenge N since... People like Overwatch... Bear's thing. I didn't even wear this on stream, but I got an Overwatch s sweater. All right, what you gonna do now? Overwatch League sweater. So boom, boom. There we have it. <laughs> oh, another one. What's up? So no one likes being the bad guy, but children are aggressive because they have the natural instinct to push boundaries, so they can find out where society's lines are drawn. So a parent must be firm and decisive in drawing those lines. While this may not sound like fun, think of it this way. The app is called Blinkist. I'll spell it here. Blinkist. Like that. Hey, if they don't learn these things from a loving, understanding parent, they'll learn it later on in a way that's sure to involve less love and understanding. Mm. So let's look at three <laughs> key methods squirrel? for good parenting. I'm a squirrel. The first is to limit the rules. Too many rules lead to frustrated kids who are constantly hitting barriers. So limit things to a few basic, easy to understand principles, such as don't bite, kick, or hit anyone don't unless bite. it's self defense. <laughs> the second is to use the minimum necessary force. Effective and fair discipline can only be applied when consequences are made clear. I don't know who had to... Did you guys... Were you guys told you weren't supposed to, like, bite and kick anyone as a kid? Because, I mean, I didn't really have to... I don't think I was told not to do that. I feel like that's just a common sense, man. Breathing through her mouth. My nose. I can't breathe through my nose. It, like... it. Do you hear it? It makes a whistle. Like... I can't, I can't, like, breathe without making, like, really loud noises. Um, like, just if I had to only breathe through my nose, I think I have a deviated septum or something naturally. Because I just, and I can't sneeze. So when I sneeze, nothing comes out. It's, like, broken. My, yeah, it's always clogged, but always. And I don't know what that is. Yeah, where I can't breathe out just my nose, like I have to breathe out my mouth or uh, mouth, or else I would suffocate. I don't know. Uh, you need to finish the black client. Oh, yeah. This one's all long, and then this one's all short. I know what you mean. I just gave up, honestly. <laughs> Like a nasal polyps? I hope not. The punishment also needs to fit the crime, which means it should only be as severe as necessary for a child to learn not to break the rule again. Sometimes a disappointed look is all that's needed. Other times it might be a week without video games. The third is to come in pairs. 
Children are clever and will try to get their way by playing one parent against the other. So a unified front is important. Mm. Also, every parent makes mistakes. But if you have a supportive partner, you'll be likelier to notice and catch those mistakes. Blink number six. That's true. The world is... F my mom always said I was a ruined child because my dad never agreed with her. And then she was like, your father lets you do everything. This is why you're the way you are. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with the way I am. She's like, no, you were ruined by your father. He just enabled you. <laughs> I was like, okay. So that's, that's her take on it. So yeah, if you're raising kids, probably should uh, figure that out so you don't argue. Lots of arguments. <laughs> just blame dad. <laughs> Uh. Filled with injustices, but we should not blame others for our lot in life. There's no point in mincing words. The world is full of challenges and suffering, but this isn't cause for despair. Nevertheless, many people throughout the ages have seen life as so cruel and unfair that drastic responses are justified. The rush. My mom was the youngest child. So I don't know. Blame Trump. An author Leo Tolstoy saw existence as so absurdly unjust. You know, all of these rules for life are essentially things, hello, um, that I think, uh, no, mm, what's it called? They're just things to help people not be depressed. Like, huh. Don't have shitty friends and sit up straight and take care of yourself like your best friend. This is all what I say in my positivity talk. And even this one it says, don't blame other people for why your life is shit, essentially. Seems pretty evident, but a lot of people blame other people for why their life is shit. So I think this is very good for depression. If you're depressed, you can't blame the, the bully at school for why you're depressed. You can blame yourself for reacting to the bully, but we can't be depressed because of other people and other people's actions. Like, we, I know it's tough, and you're like, well, but it, life is tough, or I got dealt a bad hand, but we can't be, like, sad about that. I don't know. I'm just saying we have to blame ourselves, and we have to do whatever it takes to get out of that, whether it's compartmentalizing, denying, whatever it takes. So... Mm -mm -mm -mm. In the... mm. <laughs> what? But yeah, I think when I started taking responsibility for my life is when I changed my life personally because I used to think it was everything else, it was everybody else's fault, it was everyone else's problem, and until you decide, no, it's nobody else's fault, it's nobody else's problem, and it's your problem, that's when you're going to become happy, because that's when you realize you are in control of how you react, all these things. Mostly they do it when it's too late. That he suggested there were only four valid responses. Childlike ignorance, hedonistic pleasure, suicide, or struggling on despite it all. Tolstoy analyzed these positions in his essay, A Confession, and concluded that the most honest response was suicide, while struggling on was a sign of his weak inability to take the appropriate action. Others have responded in a similar fashion, yet decided to take other lives along with their own, in acts known as murder-suicides, such as the Sandy Hook or Columbine school shootings. In June of 2016, there had been a thousand shootings in the United States over the preceding 1,260 days in which someone had killed four or more people before, in many cases, shooting themselves. The fuck? But despite Tolstoy's bleak worldview, and no matter how much you've suffered or however cruel and unjust you find life to be, there's a lot of deaths. Blame the world. That's more than 9-11. This is the gist of the sixth rule for life. Which Three times the amount of 9-11. For your own life before you judge the world. There's another Russian writer by the name of Alexander Solzhenitsyn who believed it was possible to reject the cruelty of life even when it's being cruel to you. 
Solzhenitsyn was among the communists who fought against the Nazis during World War II. Yet, despite his service, he ended up in prison by his own state after the war. As if life in a Russian gulag wasn't bad enough, he found out he had cancer while serving his sentence. But despite all this, Solzhenitsyn didn't blame the world for his lot in life. He accepted his role in supporting the Communist Party that had imprisoned him, and took it upon himself to use the time he had left to contribute something good and meaningful to the world. What he did included writing the book *The Gulag Archipelago*. Which provided a history as well as a damning indictment of the Soviet camps he'd experienced firsthand. Oh, my phone. The book played an important role in extinguishing any lingering support that Stalin's brand of communism had among intellectual circles worldwide. Wait, Link number seven. I misunderstood that. So he invented gulags, and they put him in a gulag. What? Is that what I heard? He was like, I don't, I'm really confused now. <laughs> oh no. Oh gosh. Uh, it's a torture device. A torture place. Let's put it like an, in, in I don't know what they call them. Camps? Torture camp. That That's the best way to describe it. But he kept a good attitude. Interesting. Then, sacrifice can be a meaningful act, and we should seek meaning over immediate pleasures. Have you heard the story about the monkey who got caught with his hand in the cookie jar? As the story goes, there was a cookie left inside an open jar. And the opening of the jar was just big enough for the monkey's hand to enter, but not big enough for his fist to come back out with the treat in it. So if he insisted on trying to hold on to his treat, he would be stuck. The moral here is that there is a price for greed. The monkey got himself captured because he refused to just let go of the cookie. How different is、Bunny. this from human behavior? How many people? What the heck, Bunny? Thank you so much. What? I love it! Yeah! Thank you so much for the five gifted subs. That was, I did not expect that at all, Bunny. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, yes, of course I love.、It. Oh, a third on the the gift leaderboard. Ooh, fancy, very fancy. Hold the ba. Oh, you've gifted ten subs in the chat, Bunny. I'm gonna give you VIP also because you're a grill. That kind of also happens. Thank you, thank you, Bunny. Oh my gosh. Yeah, purple diamond squad. Hell yeah, welcome. Can we get some love in the chat for Bunny? Welcome, Bunny. Am I on the? You're not allowed. Not allowed. <laughs> yeah. People pursue pleasures every day that aren't in their best interest, and how many are unwilling to make sacrifices that are in their best interest? One of the side effects of seeing the world as a pit of despair is that it makes it especially easy to justify a life based in immediate pleasures that will make it more bearable. Plus, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad, right? This is the logic behind binge eating and drinking, drug use, sexual debauchery, and other self-harming behaviors. The other side of this argument is sacrifice, the kind that brings better things in the future by giving up something now. This goes back to ancient times, where tribes would put food aside to make it through the winter or to help those in the community who couldn't hunt or farm. This is another topic heavily represented in the Bible. When God kicks Adam and Eve out of paradise, it's made clear that their original sin is the cause of the harsh and cruel life that everyone must face. However, our suffering in life is the sacrifice we must make so that we may experience the joys of the afterlife. This brings us to Rule Seven: Seek meaningful goals over instant gratification. 
Now, you might think this is a simple concept and something... I feel like the last concept and this concept are like the same thing, which is like sacrifice. Oh, wait, this is the same. We're still in the same blink, I guess. That most people already do. After all, we sacrifice our time to go to work and put in hard hours now mm. so that we can take a vacation later on or relax on a beach in the summer. Thank you again, but Bunny. But this goes deeper than sacrificing for your personal gain. There are big and small things we can sacrifice for the greater good, and the bigger the Talk sacrifice, the more rewarding it can be. Hi, peace. It can help to think of the lotus flower. This plant starts its life at the bottom of a lake, and inch by inch, it escapes the darkness until it breaks through the surface of the water and blossoms in the sun's rays. In other words, stick with something and be ready to make sacrifices to reach your goal, and you will be rewarded. Link number eight. Lies are a common tool of self-deception, but we should strive toward truthful living. Be truthful. The German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche believed that you could measure the strength of a person's spirit based upon how much undiluted truth they can tolerate. While truth is often considered mm -hmm. a valuable commodity in our culture, we nevertheless tell lies all the time. Not One of me. the main reasons for lying to ourselves and to others is to get what we think we want. The Austrian psychologist Alfred Adler called these life lies, and they're characterized as the things we'll do and say to turn a poorly thought out goal into a reality. For example, you might picture your retirement as taking place on a secluded beach in Mexico with an infinite supply of margaritas. This kind of goal can be so attractive that you'll continue fooling yourself into thinking it's possible even as events pile up that make it increasingly far-fetched. You could even develop allergies to sun, sand, and booze, but continue lying to yourself about this perfect plan, even though it's not really a plan at all, since you haven't identified any concrete steps that could potentially make it a reality. These kinds of delusions often go hand in hand with our ability to fool ourselves into thinking we already know everything we need to know. Mm. This is an especially foolish perspective to have since it shuts off our natural desire to learn and grow. But worse and far more evil things can happen when you're living a life lie and unwilling to recognize the truth. In John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost, Lucifer is portrayed as a reasonable character, but one who becomes too proud and enamored with his talents, so much so that he and his followers are kicked out of heaven for daring to challenge God's ultimate truth. This sets up rule number eight. Stop lying and be truthful. You don't need to give up each one of your ambitious goals, but you should be flexible so that your goals are realistic and reflect the truth. So, you as your understanding and worldview changes, so should your goals. Mm -hmm. And if your life is off track, it might be time to challenge the current truth you're following, the one that has you feeling weak, rejected, or worthless, and reaffirm your personal truth so that you can get back on the right track. Okay. Blink number nine. I know people are saying that this Jordan Peterson guy is, um... What was it? They were saying he, he leads the incels or something? But to be honest, all of these are tenets of spirituality. Like, literally everything that so far in this book that we've learned is just spiritual. Be truth, listen to your inner truth. Like, that's very spirituality. Like, and even like being kind to yourself, also spirituality. I don't know, surrounding yourself with like-minded people, all soul spirituality, like, all of these are, <laughs> like, well, these are all the things I learned when I learned about spirituality, so I feel like they're all the same, but I guess maybe he doesn't categorize them under spirituality, so that's really interesting. <laughs> Cause, and he just packaged it as his own book. He's like, oh, I learned spirituality. Now I'm going to say they're my rules for life. Because I studied a lot of psychology. <laughs> ah, the insult talk is not... Preaches common sense. I think it's spirituality, personal. It's all the same things. I mean, it, I don't think it's common sense for people to be kind to themselves like... 
others are kind to them because I think a lot of people that aren't kind to themselves come from like homes where their parents weren't kind to them or other people weren't kind to them growing up so it's very hard for them to be kind to themselves when people around them are like abusing them constantly and then they think that they deserve that abuse um but you wouldn't know I guess unless you grew up like that I've seen some home act like an incel nor empower them huh Mm mm-mm Am I kind of, I am very kind to myself now. I'm very kind to myself now. Conversations are an opportunity to learn and grow, not compete. Thousands of years after his death, the ancient philosopher Socrates is still considered one of the wisest men who ever lived. One of the reasons for this is his belief that the only thing he was certain of was that he knew nothing. And this was a driving force in his conversations and his openness to learn. When you engage in genuine conversation, it should be a similar process to thinking. Thinking things over is essentially listening to yourself as you explore two sides of an issue. I don't think he's an incel, but I've heard of him as described of like the king of incels. Like he like leads them or gives them like their life purpose or something. I've heard some crazy shit. I've seen, I don't know, like, is he, like, the person behind, like, I don't know, I've learned, like, I thought he was, like, behind the whole men going their own way movement and shit like that. I don't know if that's true, but, you know, maybe I might be wrong. Lol. Not true. Uh, Who knows? That's funny. But... Yeah, it's still fun. Internal dialogue, which can be difficult since you need to People exaggerate both sides Probably. while also remaining objective in your conclusion. This is one big reason why people talk to each other, so that they can more easily present the two sides of an issue and come to a conclusion. Even children will do this. If one kid thinks it would be fun to play up on a roof, they might suggest this idea to a friend who then points out the dangers of this idea. How did he become popular? Dissed them, then retracted. Wow, you guys really know a lot about this guy. Why do guys like him so much then? And how come women don't talk about him? Mm, Fake news? I don't think... Oh, you've never seen... (laughs) MG Tao, then that's that's the band of incels, the men going their own way thing. That shit is the most incelly thing I've ever seen in my life. I had no idea, and I I like fell in a hole in the internet one day, and I was like, "What is this?" I was like, "Oh my god," and I was like, "I don't know. That's pretty toxic. It is pretty toxic, man. <laughs> it is not normal." Mm, usually SJWs. Hmm. I don't know. I remember my last ex, I asked for him to take me on a date, and he told me I was an SJW because I argued with him why we didn't go on dates. So I don't really, I don't know, care for that word too much to be H. <laughs> ah! Mm -mm -mm. conversation that ensues allows the child with the original idea to take in the new perspective consider how likely it is that someone will fall and hurt themselves and hopefully make the right decision he would also tell me i'm offended by everything which i find really strange because i've talked to a lot of you guys and i don't i don't know i don't think i'm like too offended by everything uh uh it's just that he doesn't advocate for beta males. He hates them. Hmm. That's interesting. I think people should be confident. That's good. However, conversations often don't go this way. Instead, one person, or perhaps both people, will refuse to listen and treat the dialogue as a competition they need to win in order to validate their preconceptions. So rather than hearing what the other person has to say, they'll be thinking about what to say next or act like it's a contest of one-upping each other. 
This is why the ninth rule is to listen to what others have to say while presuming you have something to learn from them. I'm totally an incel. An easy I'm a tip for being femme a cell, I guess. Female incel. Is, is that what a femme cell is? Let's find out. I don't even know. <laughs> Female involuntary celibate subculture that seems to be spawned from incel. Although similar, they have complete abhorrent to each other. Would rather blame men for their lack of relationships and deserted sex life rather than realizing the cause is their lackluster personality. They have no self awareness and can't fathom the idea of a male liking them for more than looks, when in reality, this is the reason people stay away from them. That's interesting. <laughs> Fem cells are a thing. That was the Urban Dictionary definition. I learned something today. I don't really have that problem where I think people like me just for my looks. Because I just... I think I'm cute. But, I mean, I don't really play it up too much. So, I don't really feel like that's an issue. I don't know. Mm-mm-mm. Polarizations. What's a polar? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Female Chad wrote that. Lack of nostril breathing. I'm just a mouth breather nerd that figured out some things. <laughs> I'm okay. It's fine. It's fine. We could deal with that. You know what? Gives me lots of hope. If, if shit's about looks, I know plenty of really successful streamers that look worse than me and they're way more successful than me. So I don't think it's all about looks. I really don't. So I think it can help, but I see lots of successful people that aren't good looking also. So that gives me hope, man. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, well, thanks, Duff. I leave gender. Uh, <laughs> uh, content and luck. I mean, I don't know. I think it just depends from. Oh, I don't know. I think there that people will watch anything that people perceive as popular. I I really do believe that. I don't know. This is my thoughts on it. Think about all the stuff that I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's not comparing. That's an observation. Mm -mm 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 -mm. My niche. I don't even know what my niche is on Twitch. I would consider it, like, it's just a very creative vibe here. I'm always, like, learning, watching, like, hippie, hippie knowledge. This is on spirituality side, I think. Jordan Peterson is a spiritualist, even though he doesn't realize it, which is funny. Mm -mm -mm. Memorize or recap out loud what the other person just said. This serves multiple purposes. It helps assure that you've heard things correctly while also helping it stick in your memory. It also reduces the likelihood of distorting or oversimplifying details in order to suit your side of the conversation. Sometimes the truth hurts and it's painful to take in information that means you have to change your ideas and preconceptions. But this is the price you pay as part of the beautiful process of learning and growing. Blink number 10. Nothing wrong the with that hairball. The life should be confronted with clear and precise language. Life truly is an enormous and complicated tapestry, and yet we tend only to see the isolated parts we need to see. If you're walking along and see an apple on the ground, you probably don't think of the branch, tree, roots, and soil that were all connected before it fell. The reason is that we tend only to recognize or pay attention to the things that are either useful to us or stand in our way. Wait, I'm trying to read chat. Hold up. There's a lot of things going on here. 
Mm. Yeah, thanks, Nephorexus. Um, love it when you sing. Thank you. We'll probably do that. I meant to do it today, and then I was like, it's tea time. <laughs> Fuck it. It'll be hard at times to find people that are into stream watching. Not only do you need to watch stream, you need to watch the same channels when connecting with others. Huh? I'm confused. <laughs> mm. Calm. Thanks, Aronum. <laughs> I'm optimistic. That's good. That's really good. I am optimistic. I'm a survivor, okay? We're doing it. Survive! I I feel it. I'm not always my one my 100%, but I really do try to and it's gotten so much better. So much better. We're all survivors here, guys, right? Thank you for surviving and doing your best job. Mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> okay, Beyonce. It's Destiny's Child. <laughs> the apple catches our attention because it represents food and sustenance. But we don't consider the tree and the soil because they are of no use for satisfying our needs. Of course, we can't be thinking of everything all the time. The world is far too complex for that. So, the mind simplifies things and makes it easier for us to get on with our lives. However, every once in a while, something can happen to shatter our conception of the world and make things seem chaotic. This is why Rule 10 is extremely important. Use precise language. How does this help? Well, think of the word car. You know what a car is, right? It's a vehicle that gets you from point A to point B. Yes. But when this vehicle breaks down halfway between A and B, do you know the precise ways in which a car works? Can you pop the hood and fix this piece of complex machinery? There's a good chance that when your car breaks down, you feel primal urges to curse and maybe even kick the car for not being such a simple thing anymore. This is what happens when things get complex and chaotic. So in order to recover, you must re-establish order by no. clearly and precisely explaining what went wrong. The same thing needs to happen when your body breaks down and you get sick. There could be any number of problems going on, so you need to tell your doctor the precise symptoms. Does your stomach hurt or is it a fever? Did it begin after you ate something? What was it? How dare by you? By being precise, you can restore order and take steps to start feeling better. Precise language can make your relationships run more smoothly as well. Does your partner do something that bugs you, like failing to clean up after themselves? It is. The sooner you're honest and precise with them, the easier life will be. Why is there a blink to be precise with people? I think what they mean is communicate. Blink number 11. Okay, there we're on rule 11 of Jordan Peterson's rules. We're pretty close. That's out of 12. So, yeah. Doctor, help me! <laughs> Bad and oppressive men. But according to the author, we must avoid suppressing human nature. In George Orwell's The Road to Wigan Pier, the author comes to the conclusion that socialism was attracting defenders in England not because of sympathy for the harsh conditions facing minors, but out of hatred for the rich and powerful. Today, there are similar attitudes toward the male-dominated leadership known as the patriarchy. One influential source of this hatred for the patriarchy is Max Horkheimer of the Marxism-based Frankfurt School, a proponent of so-called critical theory. He felt that education and intellectualism should focus on social change, and instead of working to empower women, it should seek to combat and destroy the powerful oppressors in a culture, that is, the ruling males. Likewise, in humanities... Wait, is your name... Wait, are you a George Peterson reader? Because your name is Jor Pets. I'm sorry. That was just, like, super random. That seemed really specific. Oh, I was... I, <laughs> education is important. Yeah. 
Very interesting. <laughs> Under that, that watch the same channels, huh? Hi, Ali. Hi, guys. Another bunch? Wait, what? Who, you, who are you? Oh, well, who am I? Who am I? Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm in your follower list. Some t we do music on here and we talk about hippie shit pretty much and we read philosophical talks like George... Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, clearly. That's what we're doing right now. Because everybody says this is really important, you know? History, get it? This is my artiste name. Thanks. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were talking about George Orwell, okay? I can't, like, it got confused. It really got confused in there. So I wanted to listen to it. Courses around the world today... The recommended political action is the dismantling of our macho culture. Macho. Everything is about destroying rather than fixing or creating. Destroy. According to the author, it has left us with an outrage directed at male behavior that can tend to be excessively harsh and short-sighted. For example, many male students are regularly confronted with hostile accusations of being part of the patriarchy. But according to the author, the path of righteous change shouldn't involve treating every man Blinkist, as a potential DJ. sex offender. While it's true that many men have behaved deplorably, the author argues men have also used their naturally aggressive attitudes for good, like engaging in healthy competition, exploring dangerous areas, and making much-needed progress. It reminds the author of Skateboarders. Outside some of the buildings on the University of Toronto campus, there were amazing skateboarders showing off admirable fearlessness and a willingness to embrace danger. But then city officials decided to prohibit skateboarding on the campus. Which brings us to rule number 11. Don't bother young people skateboarding. According to the author, we can establish rules that go against the very nature of who we are as people. Our rules should definitely protect us, but they should... So this chapter is about um, not suppressing human nature. So I guess don't suppress what is natural to you or, like, fun? Do so in a way that suppresses the good qualities in people. We've actually seen a fairly good fictionalized account of what can happen when men are stripped of their masculinity. As the story in Fight Club shows us, Aggression can then become a forbidden fruit that manifests itself in fascist tendencies. Another real-world reaction to emasculation is the current resurgence of right-wing politics. The truth is, women don't want boys to grow up without a chance to learn things for themselves and be independent. He posits that every boy has a mom and what kind of mom would want to care for a dependent man-child? All right, so that, number that was really harsh. That sounded like some of the... Sh uh, I mean, I guess that sounds like some Jordan Peterson stuff. <laughs> the, I, I mean, women don't want man-childs. Honestly, as a woman, I might agree with this. We don't want man-childs. Figure it out, man. Figure it out. I can't disagree with that. He's probably right. <laughs> life is hard and full of sorrow so it's important to celebrate the small joys in life have you i feel like i have to disagree with that the whole life is hard and full of sorrow i really think it's about perspective because you know it's about perspective <laughs> like yeah life can have that but if you choose to see it in a whole different light of like, wow, I learned a bunch of things and if that didn't happen, maybe I wouldn't be where I am today and stuff. I don't know. It could be perspective, honestly. But okay, we'll listen. Have you ever had to care for a sick person? It can be one of life's more difficult challenges. The author's daughter has been coping with severe arthritis since she was six years old. She has suffered from constant pain, requiring frequent injections and multiple surgeries for joint replacements. If you had a daughter in this situation, you might think life is unfair. 
but it's important to recognize that the dark bits of pain, suffering, and sorrow are what give the good moments their value. Consider Superman. When this character was first introduced, he was hugely popular. But then the comic book writers kept giving him power after power until he was virtually invincible. Naturally, readers started to find him super bold. You know, that's really interesting, Twitch account. You were saying something about when mothers these days are teaching their sons to cry and be sissies. I don't know. I think I would probably. But what I would say to him is I would say, you don't do this in public. You do this with people you trust. So you could do this with your mom. You could do it with your dad. You can do it with your girlfriend. But don't do it in public. So I don't know. I think I think it is okay to cry. But I don't think it's so good for a man to cry in front of his guy friends, for example. I don't know. That would just, you know. Mm -mm -mm. Not with the girlfriend? I think... It's okay. I like it when I see guys cry. Honestly, it makes me feel like they're human. I can't remember who I was talking to and I was just like, you don't seem like you're a human. Like, there, where's the emotion? Hello? Is there a human in there? Hello? Wake up. And I, I definitely think that's, that's true. So, yeah. Mmm... But there are never tears. It depends who are, who's pissed me off. Because sometimes I'm just like, I wish I could cry. Like, I'm a crier. And there's just some people tears won't come out for. So it just means you're over the bullshit at that point. Uh, how is cry formed? My guy friend described it to me. He was saying, like, He's just like, when something painful or sad happens to him, he's just like, I compartmentalize it and move on. I was just like, how do you do that? You're like, oh, he's like, I don't know. It's just compartmentalize, Janelle. And I was like, that's weird. Okay. <laughs> so maybe that's a guy thing instead of a girl thing. Is that a guy thing? I, I can't really do that. Can't relate. But um, I'm just curious. You could just put it in a box. In the box in the corner. Oh, that's helpful. Emotions are easy to put in a box. <laughs> what? Uh, can you turn empathy on and off? According to that person, he said he could turn his feelings off or his empathy off, essentially. Feelings, empathy. That's a man thing, not a guy thing, I guess. Who knows? Hmm. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, which one of you guys can switch off your emotions? Press 1 if you can. Turn off your emotions. Uh, press 2 if you cannot. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, he learned to cope. Doesn't sound common. Feelings can be turned on off. I can't. I'm 2. There's a lot of people that can turn off their feelings. This is weird. Whoa. Whoa. I just have tons of psychopaths that watch my channel. <laughs> I'm pretty sure... You know who's a badass and cries in, like, all of his movies? Um... Jack from Titanic. I can't remember his actor name. <laughs> but I swear he cries in every fucking movie. Alright? <laughs> uh, Leo! Yes! Leo fucking cries in all of his movies. <laughs> He's a badass too, and he cries. I don't know. I'm just saying, it's a it's a good example. <laughs> uh, does he cry in Wolf of Wall Street? I bet he does. Probably when he loses all the money in that movie. What do you want to bet? He he definitely. I feel like there's gotta be a Leo crying compilation. Mm. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with crying. Exactly, Commander. That's what I was saying. I think somebody said that there's something wrong. I was like, 
I'm pretty sure Leonardo DiCaprio cries in every movie and he's kind of a badass in every movie like where's Angelina do I like him I think he aged fucking horrid though he aged so bad he did not look good you know how most guys are like we age like fine wine he did not he aged like a a bad milk he did not go down the right road he did too many drugs same thing with you know who who looked really good for a while and then just didn't Johnny Depp. He just, I don't know what happened. He had way too many rums, rum nights, and drugs. Clearly, did not age well. Nope, nope, nope. But Jeffy knows. <laughs> Leo is crying. Uh, uh. <laughs> His acting aged really good, though. Oh, he's, yeah, he's great at acting. He's a great actor. He's amazing. Do you understand that movies are movies in reality? Well, I'm just saying, I would cry like Leo cries. That seems about right to me. (laughs) Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Tell me. I look terrible for my age. Oh, no. Only allowed to cry if you're a warrior. Yeah. Honestly, I think that's the sexiest. When a guy cries. So I... Oh, my God, Bunny. What? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank Bunny Ho. If you... um, I'm just going to say Bunny. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Um, If... uh, Just put love in the chat, guys. Yeah. I love crying. Nice man. What? Who? Yeah. Hugs. Another another bunch. Yeah. Welcome to the Fox family. If you got a sabu. And um, yeah. Good evening. Good evening. We're on the last one of these thinkies, which is like good. So I don't know what's so this is oh yeah the one about talking about life is sorrow so we need to celebrate our joys oh crying makes me feel so good after I have a good cry I'm like I feel good like sometimes I just well up of emotion I don't know how that happens but it just builds up in me it really does and I get it out and I'm like I have no tears to cry and then I feel really good that I'm sure you can relate if you've ever had a good one do you have a passport? Do you have your shots? I have a passport. I can't remember the last time I got a shot because I'm like really scared of shots. Um, let's watch The Notebook together and cry. I can't watch fucking Ryan Gosling in anything because I like went on a date with a guy that like looked just like Ryan Gosling. Like m- me and my roommate like just we just called him Ryan Gosling he was just Ryan Gosling in my living room I mean he wasn't Ryan Gosling but he just was a doppelganger and he apparently doppelganged for Ryan Gosling apparently I don't know only in LA and like Ryan Gosling totally broke my heart so now I can't watch the notebook without being like annoyed that Ryan Gosling broke my heart so that happened (laughs) Uh, so there there you have it How's new roomie? New roomie is great. <laughs> ah, that was super weird. I think, I think he had issues though. Why is there no story for girl? Why should girls be protecting men? They're like double my size. Literally, I think I wrestled with one of my guy friends one day, and they pinned me down like with one of their arms like I could just do nothing and I was just weak they don't even weigh that much more than me like guys are so strong I'm like the fuck it's so weird they are so strong like I'm useless like compared to like guy strength like if we're just talking about muscles yeah their muscles are so muscly like it's crazy so I I don't think I girl should be defending a guy honestly like we don't even compare on a 
biological standpoint. Like, yeah, y'all have superior muscles, I'll admit it. All right? They get weaker when you kick them in the balls. Oh, man, that's true. Moose called. What's a moose? You get two girls to protect you. <laughs> okay, we could do the two girls. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's kind of like, uh, do you remember that? That uh, I don't know. It was in Zelda. I think it was called like Gerudo Valley or something. And all it was all these like woman guards around that area. And they'd like kick your butt. <laughs> Nobody probably remembers that. Boring. Uh... Mm -mm -mm -mm. If there is no risk of danger, Superman's victories are hollow. And in the same way, good moments would be meaningless if we didn't have to fight through difficulties and suffering to reach them. This is why it's important to follow Rule 12. Make the best out of even the smallest joys that life offers. By following this rule, you'll be sure to embrace life and appreciate every good thing that comes your way. You'll also be sure to this see yourself spiritual. through the tough times, even when they're Appreci prolonged. Appreciate the good shit. I've been of saying pain this. And the author's daughter eventually found a new physiotherapist who helped her find greater mobility, a fair amount of normality, and a lot less pain. There may be further complications down it's the road, but they're both midnight. happy to enjoy the improvements for as long as they last. This is the best attitude to have. It's the kind that makes you take your time to stop and pet a cat when you cross one on the sidewalk. Pet a cat. Remember, there is no day without the darkness of night. Just as there's no order without chaos. A day at Disneyland, there is, there is no life, darkness. It's also night. what gives meaning to our perseverance <laughs> and makes the moments of peace so rewarding. Thanks for listening to our blinks to 12 Rules for Life by Jordan B. Peterson. The book's main takeaway is that navigating through life you, is a no, constant struggle no. filled with trials and tribulations. And if there's any guarantee in life, it's that there will likely be more troubles around the corner. But there is also beauty and joy to be found, however fleeting these moments may be. All you can do is try well, trouble your best, is fleeting be too. honest and truthful, and avoid being selfish and prideful. It's also important to take responsibility. I think it's funny how they were like, yeah, we need to appreciate the happy moments, though they're fleeting. I'm like, you ever think about trouble? Trouble is fleeting too. You ever think about that? Yeah, exactly. Perspective. Positivity. Good shit is happening. Just because I have a stalker doesn't mean everything has ended. The stream is great. Look at these beautiful people in chat. Look at you. Yes, you. Yeah, and K Nasty is going to take a sugar daddy. You and Tucker need to hook up in chat, okay? You guys, I, I think that's a really good good meat oh my gosh Machiavelli's the prince I have not my and way of speech one. go detail thank you for gifting MC mega dude thank you ability for your own lot in life and this is and the end the world or others for your shortcomings Ultimately, it is only you who can improve but your life. But stream, that's funny. Want some more actionable advice? Ask yourself, how was I wrong? You may not like the answer, but this is a way to keep improving and stay truthful. By asking yourself this I question I do that when I meditate basis, all the you'll time. You'll be able to enjoy the satisfaction of making progress every day as you keep striving to be a better human being. That's the whole point of Got spirituality. Just drop an email to all the same shit. .com. Same thing. Man. Pretty good. Pretty good. What do you guys think? You can only prevent forest fires. This lady speaking now. I mean... Okay, I literally listen to those things, the blinks, the blink books, like when I'm in the car, honestly. I think they're really interesting and fun. <laughs> Georgie Peterson. 